大家好，我是雷神。Uh, this is going to be my first talk in Chinese. No,、um, unfortunately, definitely not not there. But、uh, yeah, that's pretty much where my Chinese ends. I can order my bubble tea, but、uh, so I'll survive. I'll survive. Let's put it like that.、Um, yes, thanks so much for joining.、Uh, I'm Thor. I help、uh, developers build. So I、um, work for a little company called Superbase.、Uh, I know、uh, some folks already said they they've heard of it. That's great.、Um, I have、uh, so the the QR code on the left is just the link to that page where、uh, I just have the resources.、Um, basically, I'm using for this talk,、uh, and then、uh, on the right you can ask questions. Uh, kind of throughout the talk, you know, as you kind of think of them,、uh, you can put them put them in、uh, Slido.、Um, yes,、uh, this is going to be interesting because I、uh, don't have a microphone stand, and I'm kind of should I sit down? Should I stand?、Um, not entirely sure.、Uh, we'll figure it out as we go along. Now,、uh, Superbase, yes,、uh, open source. Uh, that's kind of the theme of the night,、uh, so we called it an open source、uh, meetup.、Uh, we're the open source Firebase alternative,、uh, if you want to put it like that.、Um, it helps with the SEO. You know, a lot of people search for Firebase, so I think that's、uh, that's sort of the main thing there. Probably the same with Notion.、Uh, that that helps、uh, helps with <laughs> with SEO as well.、Um, but yes, so basically. You know, it, it comes from we love the developer experience of Firebase, right? If you've worked with Firebase, getting started is、uh, super easy.、Uh, eventually, it might get a bit hairy,、um, but you know, it's it's kind of the idea of taking the developer experience from Firebase and applying it to、um, a relational database. And Postgres,、uh, open source relational、uh, database,、um, been around for I think over thirty. Uh, years, you know, three decades.、Um, uh, fun fact, actually, like、um, it, it、uh, precedes、uh, GitHub, right? So、uh, the actual management of the Postgres、uh, project is kind of via、uh, email. There, there's actually an interesting、uh, blog post about sort of how、um, you know proposals get merged into Postgres. It's it, it's quite interesting because it's not、uh, on GitHub.、Um, But yes, so basically the database is the foundation of everything.、Um, so that's Postgres,、uh, and we're pretty much all in on Postgres because Postgres is so powerful. It basically is like using a cheat code.、Um, so we're using、uh, things like、uh, authentication. So that's also、um, we're using a, a server, a, a, an open source service called GoTrue.、Uh, was originally built by、um, Netlify. Um, back in the day for Jamstack sites, we've kind of forked off of that,、um, and the authentication、uh, actually sits on top of the database. So all the user data lives directly within auth schema within your database,、uh, and then we're using the JWT with the role level security policies, which is a native concept within Postgres,、um, to actually restrict access to data. Um, which means that we can put kind of this auto-generated API layer on top、uh, using an open-source、uh, project called Postgres.、Um, yeah, it's confusing with the names, but REST. You get the idea, Postgres,、um, and that actually allows us to automatically generate、um, REST APIs.、Uh, we also have GraphQL、uh, APIs built in、um, into Postgres with. Uh, a Postgres extension, and so that's the other exciting part of、uh, kind of the Postgres ecosystem. There.、Um, all right, I probably probably need to be faster.、Uh, okay, let me see if I sit down and kind of move the、um, thing every once in a while.、Uh, let's see. Did that work? Okay, sweet.、Um, yes, Twitter. If you're not following us,、uh, feel free to do that. But actually, while we're here,、um, so we just launched、uh, Superbase Vector uh, on um, on Product Hunt. So <laughs> let's everyone go to Product Hunt. 
um, and maybe upvote. <laughs> Let's go while we're here. Maybe we can. Does that work? <laughs> yes. Uh, so if you go there uh, and you do that while I tell you about um, Postgres uh, Vector. So who's familiar with kind of building AI applications, embeddings, vectors, kind of all that, all that fun stuff? Anyone? No one? Oh, yes, back there, lovely. Um, so basically, you know, the idea is that you take kind of something like human language or vision um, and turn that context into um, a vector. Uh, and um, did everyone manage to scan the QR code? Then I can go and show you some <laughs> visuals that help with the, the explanation. Okay, very good. Um, so if we go, uh, if we go here, uh, yeah, let's maybe look at this. Um, so there's a blog post that explains kind of, um, you know, working with embeddings and uh, vectors in, in Postgres. Um, and so basically it's kind of this idea here where um, you're kind of translating, you know, something like human language and the context of human language into um, basically just numbers, kind of a, a vector. And if you look at this here, so we have kind of, this is just two dimensional, right? Um, and say we have something like the cat chases the mouse uh, and the kitten hunts, what does this say, rabbits? Rodents, ah, oh, there we are. Contextually, that is fairly close to each other, right? You have a cat, a kitten, um, a mouse, a rodent, uh, and so if you translate this into kind of the vector space, um, this context will be fairly close to each other, right? Now, if you have something like, I like ham sandwiches, that is fairly far away from kind of the, the previous two statements. And so if you, if you put this into this vector space, um, what you can then do is you can perform um, vector similarity search um, or kind of proximity search where you're basically looking, okay, um, for two vectors to be close to each other, then there is some contextual relationship. Uh, and so basically now if you're um, putting, you know, language or um, images, if you can translate that into kind of this vector space um, and you can store these vectors and then perform, you know, kind of the search on it, um, then you have, you can build fairly, fairly powerful uh, applications. Um, and so, PG Vector is uh, a Postgres extension that allows you to store vectors of different dimensions right within Postgres and actually create indexes on top of that data, on top of those vectors, um, and then perform kind of these search operations uh, within, within Postgres. Um, and so if you're working with something like um, OpenAI, where you can turn um, kind of that context like human language or images into vectors, um, you can then store that into the database uh, using um, Postgres or you know Superbase Vector, which is basically a managed PG Vector Postgres uh, kind of bundle. Um, now, obviously, to kind of represent something like visual context or human language, you need a lot more dimensions than just these two, and so um, you actually have like vectors with you know depending on the model, you know, more than 500 dimensions. Uh, and obviously that is, that is kind of very big numbers. Uh, but we'll just use this for kind of visualization, uh, visualizing this. Um, if you look at kind of the docs, so we have um, some documentation, uh, Superbase Vector, sort of the, the soft launch that we've done now. We have the, the vector store that kind of allows us to store these embeddings um, using Postgres and PG Vector. Um, uh, there's a Python client library called Vex um, that kind of takes care of the indexing, uh, creating of the collections, uh, performing, you know, queries. So if you've worked with something like um, Pinecone, which is, you know, kind of a dedicated vector database, sort of specialized on, you know, vector data, um, it is kind of fairly similar to that experience where you're creating collections and you're querying, um, querying those. Uh, you're kind of upserting things into your collections. We'll, we'll look at an example in a bit. 
Um, but kind of the exciting part um, with, um, with PG Vector is that you uh, can actually, you know, because your data is sort of within, um, where is it? Is it this? Um, no, that's not. Anyway, you can go through the docs yourselves. But um, the idea is that you know you have both your vector data as well as your you know normal relational data uh, or your files. So we also have um, uh, unstructured data like file storage, kind of as part of the Superbase stack. So everything sort of is coexisting uh, within the same uh, database, the same the same ecosystem, um, and all the parts are open source. You can use them uh, separately or you know you can kind of bring uh, all the different bits and pieces together and sort of that's kind of the philosophy within Superbase open source modular so like each piece you can you can um, take on its own self host um, or you know obviously then our business model is we host it for you and um, we manage uh, kind of the hosted database service for you and that's kind of where we make uh, make the money Okay, great. So let's actually dive into some examples. And you know, I'm I personally I'm I'm a JavaScript fan, but I hear kind of in the in the machine learning space, um, people tend to use uh, Python. Um, what what I find exciting about kind of this Python example uh, is that I managed to build it without you know being very proficient in in Python. So I think um, that's sort of uh, the great thing here. Uh, so it's it's this link, um, the the image search with uh, OpenAI Clip. So it's an open source um, model, and uh, the the interesting thing here is that it uh, turns images as well as text into the same vector space. So this means that you can perform image similarity search, right, uh, by comparing um, the two vectors of you know images, for example, uh, but also you can do um, uh, text to image or image to text. So you can kind of translate between um, these different uh, environments. Uh, and so this is kind of what, what this looks like. So we're basically putting um, the image data as well as the, the text data into the same vector space. Uh, and you can see here we have an image of um, two dogs in the snow which then the text of two dogs in the snow, they, those two vectors are very close to each other um, because you know, the context is, is kind of the same, um, same there. And so what we can do is um, we have this example. It is on GitHub. It is linked in, in the example as well. Uh, and what we can do is we can run uh, Superbase uh, locally, which is pretty nice. So because it's all kind of open source, uh, it's already running. So, sorry, I'm typing with one hand here. Uh, I, I should say status, yes. So um, we're basically running the entire Superbase stack locally here. So we get kind of our API URL, we get a GraphQL URL, um, we have our database URL. So if we're kind of connecting directly to the database, we can we can use the, the Postgres URL here. Uh, and then also we have um, a Superbase Studio um, and you can run that uh, locally as well, which is quite exciting. So if you're, you know, somewhere where you don't have internet, um, well, you do kind of when you start uh, need to pull down some Docker images. So ideally, do that be before takeoff. But you know, if you manage to start the service locally and have it running, you can actually develop, you know, kind of offline, uh, so to speak. Uh, so we have our default project here. Uh, we can kind of look at, look at the table editor. We have sort of our public schema. We have a bunch of other schemas. So as I mentioned, we have kind of this auth service that sits on top of the database. And so we have kind of all the, um, the tables here in, in, in a separate schema there. And so if we now look at um, this example, let me just open it up in um, here. And I'm, I'm just using uh, poetry. Uh, to run this, which is sort of um, kind of like NPM, but for, for Python, let's put it like that. Um, and so here I'm just using uh, VEX. So VEX is our uh, Python client for um, uh, vector uh, 
handling, handling vectors and embeddings. Um, and so I have here my database connection. So I'm basically just instantiating um, a VEX client with my database connection. So this is here locally on my machine. Um, and I'm, I'm actually using something uh, here. I think this is, uh, it's open source as well. It's called Orp, uh, Orp Stack, I believe. Orp um, Stack only found this uh, recently. Um, and it's uh, basically, oh, OK. There we go, it's cinema mode now. Um, so it's, it's uh, basically Docker running, um, sort of Docker optimized for uh, Apple Silicon. So if, you're, if you have a MacBook with um, like an, an Apple chip, uh, then actually this will run Docker a lot more efficiently um, than say Docker desktop or something like that. Uh, and I think it's open source, so um, that's pretty exciting. And so you can see here, I, uh, by Superbase Start, I have all these different services uh, running here. Uh, and then what I can do is I have my seed method. So I create my client. Uh, I create a new collection that I call image vectors. Uh, and we're using the OpenAI clip model here, which translates our images and our text into um, this uh, vector with 512 dimensions, right? Um, uh, and then I uh, have my model, so we're using the uh, OpenAI clip model. And then I just have uh, a couple of images um, just here from, um, maybe just remember those images. Uh, they'll be in the ex exam later. Um, so this is the couple images we have. They're just from uh, Unsplash. Uh, and so we're uh, just encoding them here as a vector. Uh, and then what we're doing is we're just using our um, images collection and we're just upserting um, our vectors here. And we can specify some uh, metadata that we can also later use for uh, kind of um, filtering um, in, in the query later on. Right, and then we're just saying, okay, we inserted the images and um, we are creating an index. So after we're upserting kind of the images, um, we're basically creating an index to make the, uh, the vector uh, proximity search kind of more uh, efficient. So let's say poetry run uh, seed. And so um, we're doing all this, uh, what I just mentioned, we're generating our vectors um, we're upserting them into the database, we're creating our in index. And so now if we go back to um, our locally running, so this is running on localhost, kind of our, our um, dashboard, we now have a new schema uh, called VEX. Can you see that in the back? Do I need to zoom in a bit more? Um, and then here, this is our uh, collection that we created. So this is our image vectors. Uh, you can see we have uh, our IDs. These are our vectors, um, so uh, you can see the column type here is vector, so that's um, the, the column type that PG vector um, allows us to store um, vectors, I think, of up to 2,000 dimensions, uh, something like that. And then we have some metadata here, um, which is just uh, JSONB, so we can use that to, to filter later, later in our query. Um, so that, that's it, right? That was pretty, pretty easy. So now we can do, um, we can perform some searches here. Uh, again, we're creating our client. Now in this case, we already have our collection. So we uh, just get kind of a reference to our um, image vectors uh, collection. Uh, again, we're using our OpenAI clip um, model. Uh, and so now in this case, we're getting a query string uh, from our arguments. We're encoding the query string into the same uh, vector space as our images. And now we're just doing a query with our query vector, which is our text string. Um, we're just limiting it here to the most uh, relevant result. Um, there's kind of other uh, input parameters you can, you can put in there. Um, and then we can also filter on kind of the, um, the metadata where you can just say, OK, uh, we won't only want to uh, look at kind of uh, vectors that represent sort of uh, JPEG um, images, for example. And then we're just getting our result, uh, and we'll just open up um, the result. So this is where it comes in handy if you remembered what was in the pictures earlier, because we're going to run some searches. OK, who wants to start? Uh, I think I need to run search. What should we search for? 
Sorry? And open field. Open field? Yeah. Okay. All right, and so ideally now, and the reason why I called these one, two, three, four, there we go. I think that's where you applaud. <laughs> now, I mean, right? I think it is quite impressive because like, if you think about, okay, you, you, you use this like, on a daily basis, is you use something like Google Images, right? And you, you can just search for like me on a bike. Um, not me, like yourself on a bike. Uh, and it actually shows you all the pictures of you on a bike. Um, and, but the, the tech behind it, right, is like if you think, okay, how do I actually implement this? Here you go, it's just a couple lines of, of, of Python code. Okay, um, I mean, obviously I could have been cheating here somehow. Uh, so maybe should we try another one? Just throw them out. Laptop. Laptop. Well, I mean, that's interesting because we didn't have anything that's close to a laptop. So let's see what this model thinks is the closest to a, to a laptop. <laughs> to be fair, on your lap here, there could be, could be a laptop, right? We don't know. Maybe actually, maybe the model knows a lot more than, um, than, than we do. Now that would be pretty mind-blowing if that was actually the case. Maybe fruit? Let's see, we did have some uh, grapes in there. Yes, so we get, we get our grapes. Um, anyone? Anything else? We did have a... Um, we did have a bike in front of a red brick wall. Obviously, if I put that in, that might be a bit too easy, but um, maybe if we just say vehicle. Uh, I think the bike was kind of the closest contextually to what we had as, yes, very good. It's like I practiced this. Um, <laughs> what else did we have? Okay, we had, uh, so these are sort of both, I guess, Flowers, no, I mean, oh, let's see, what, what, what happens if we put flower? Anyone has an idea how this model was trained? I don't know. Do we get the, yes, okay. I think, I think that's, that's fair enough. Um, how about something abstract, like happy? Happy? Okay. That's true, like, any, any predictions what, uh, what's happy? <laughs> that is a happy remote worker working in a field, fantastic internet connection, they are happy. <laughs> All right, um, yes, so the point I'm trying to make here is obviously, right, like the math behind this is fairly complex and, you know, like even if you're using something like Pinecone, actually this is kind of a copy of the Pinecone example for image similarity search. But it is quite complex, even still, if you're, if you're kind of implementing this with Pinecone. But like for me, I don't have much knowledge of kind of the AI world. I don't have much knowledge of Python. And yet, somehow a fun little demo came, came out, right? And so that's kind of, kind of what we're trying to do in general. We're trying to make Postgres more accessible to kind of a broader audience of developers. And here with sort of Superbase Vector as well, we're trying to make it easier to, you know, allow you to, to build kind of AI-enabled um, applications. Um, now, the, the, I think the subject of my talk was something uh, like building your own um, jet GPT. Obviously, let's, let's uh, quickly end on that one. Um, build your own jet GPT uh, here with uh, Dino. So for the, you know, let's go back, go back to JavaScript. Um, Actually, who, who has uh, here worked with uh, Dino before? A little show of hands. Any Dino fans? Yeah, the super base Fox. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, I love Dino. They probably have the best, the best swag in the, in the business. Somehow they found someone who can draw the cutest dinosaurs. And um, yeah, it just, it just works, I think. Um, uh, yes, there we go. Okay, so we're starting up, uh, again, Superbase Start. We're starting our database here. Um, I probably should have 
maybe opened the code before before I ran this. Um, this is uh, yeah. Well, it wasn't wasn't too bad considering how many Docker containers kind of are behind this. Um, so now uh, one difference here is uh, we're using um, OpenAI uh, to generate embeddings um, rather than kind of running the model sort of ourselves. Um, so we're just uh, going to um, the OpenAI API. Um, we have kind of a pre-processing step. So maybe if, if we quickly look at um, the repository, uh, you can look at kind of the, the different sort of things that are happening here. So we have a GitHub action. Uh, and basically, the GitHub action, anytime we're kind of making changes to our docs. So we have like a bunch of markdown files with kind of context. Uh, and we put um, you know, that context. We generate embeddings for it. Because what we want to do is, you know, if you, if you use ChatGPT and you ask something you know, to ChatGPT, it doesn't have kind of the context that you're asking this question in, right? And so if um, we know you're you know, developing with Superbase, um, we can actually get the relevant context from the Superbase documentation, give that to OpenAI, and make sure that the answer is actually only coming from this context, meaning that you can get a lot more precise kind of answers where, you know, um, like if I go to ChatGPT and ask, like, what is PG vector? Um, or, no, I think the example is like, if I ask, what are embeddings? Then um, ChatGPT will reply with like, oh, in the concept of machine learning, you know, because it has to set, set all this context. But if I actually provide kind of the context of um, this query, I say, okay, we're developing with Superbase, and I ask the question now, what is PG vector? Uh, then it knows the context, um, and we can provide kind of the documentation that we have, uh, and then have ChatGPT actually provide kind of a concise sort of um, answer. Okay. Uh, and so we are pre-processing our documentation, we're generating embeddings, and we're storing them in um, the database. Uh, and so we can quickly look at um, uh, where is our dashboard. Here's our dashboard now. Um, this dashboard is now running our other project. Uh, and so here, um, I'm not using the, the Python client anymore. So this is all, all JavaScript. Um, and so I just have here in my code base, I have one piece of documentation which is um, this Markdown file called uh, OpenAI Embeddings and storing embeddings in Postgres. Uh, and so I'm just turning this uh, into different page sections here. So basically all the, the different sections. Uh, and then I'm just generating uh, a vector so that I can later perform um, kind of the search to find the, the relevant context. Uh, and then la lastly, what I'm doing is kind of at, um, at runtime, Basically, when uh, someone is asking a query, uh, I then um, take kind of the, the query string here. Uh, what we need to do is we need to sanitize it because OpenAI actually has uh, some, some terms of service uh, where you can't like, you know, ask the model some crazy things. Uh, that's, that's against the, the rules because otherwise it will get very rude um, because it gets trained on all that. So you need to sanitize your query. Um, you have your um, moderation uh, response. So you're kind of asking basically OpenAI, hey, is this an OK thing to ask? Uh, then OpenAI says, yes, um, here is the sanitized way. Uh, you can ask it. And then we create an embedding. Uh, here we're using, um, I believe this is GPT-3. Uh, text embedding model. Um, and we're now then performing our, um, we're using kind of a remote procedure call to perform um, our um, basically uh, proximity search um, using kind of the, the JavaScript client here. Um, so that's something that we'll have to make a little bit easier with Vex. You saw it was, it was a bit easier to do that. Um, uh, but then what we can do is, yeah, we uh, tokenize this. Uh, and then this is kind of the, the important piece. So we're generating this prompt where we're saying, OK, you're very enthusiastic Superbase representatives who loves to help people. That's important. So that the answer will actually be helpful. 
Um, giving, given the following sections from the Superbase documentation, answer the question using only that information. And so that's kind of the crucial part where we're setting the context to be only the context of our documentation. Um, we're providing the context of basically all the pieces of the documentation that are relevant to the user's question. Uh, and then we're putting the question in here and then we're saying, okay, answer as markdown, including related code snippets. Um, sending that off to the OpenAI completions uh, endpoint, and then we're just streaming back um, the response. Okay, and I think I'm running way over time here. Um, so Dino tasks start, and you know basically the the front end piece to this is is, is fairly small. Um, but what we can do here now is what are embeddings. And so if I fire this off now, we're looking at relevant information uh, in our database. Uh, we're sending that off to OpenAI, and then we're streaming back kind of the response. Um, now, if I put in what are embeddings um, it just into ChatGPT, then it will say like, you know, in the context of AI and machine learning, yada, 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 it will be a lot kind of longer, um, longer response. Uh, or I can say, uh, can I store embeddings with Superbase? Let's see if the typo, typo is fine. Yes, PG vector, lovely. Uh, and there we are, that's uh, how far I'll go. And um, thanks so much for joining us tonight. And hopefully uh, you get a chance to play around with PG vector. And if you do, let me know what you're building. Thanks so much. Cheers.